Hello and welcome to our webinar SQL datasets, good, bad and ugly. Today we will talk about implementation metrics across the industry to understand utilization of SQL datasets which represent non-standard study specific variables in STDM tabulation data. I am co-founder of OpenCDisk project and Pinnacle 21. For eight years, I have been working as a subject matter expert consultant on several FDA projects like DataFit, Jumpstart, CoreDF, and eData support. I'm a lead of consultative services and Pinnacle 21, and I see my mission to be our user's advocate. Before we move to presentation, there are a few administrative items to talk about. Anytime during this webinar, you can ask your questions by submitting them using this icon at the left bottom corner of your screen. I will answer your questions at the end of the webinar. If something will be not covered during today's session due to time limitation, we will publish it as webinar Q&A on Pinnacle 21 website. In terms of metrics, about 15% of all questions we receive during our webinars are about availability of the slides. We will publish the webinar slides soon on our Pinnacle 21 blog page, where you can also find links to webinar recording and answers to all your questions. Sometimes we receive too many questions. For example, during our webinar, most confusing validation rules from Mike Beers in April, we got uh, 230 questions from uh, 1,900 participants. So for your convenience, we categorized all these questions to about 10 groups and are still publishing our answers as a separate blog post dedicated to each area, like uh, mapping considerations for screen failures, not assigned and not treated subjects on previous slide. Also, you can find a recording of most of our webinars on Pinnacle 21 YouTube channel. Okay, let's start our presentation and talk about standardized representation of sponsor study specific non STDM variables. Supplemental color files or subqual data sets are standardized representation of sponsors' non STDM study specific variables. These non standard variables may have all the properties of standard STDM variables. Uh, for example, if necessary, subqual variables may contribute to domain keys. As name supplemental qualifiers suggest, these data sets are intended to capture additional qualifiers for the observation. Other type of collected information should not be stored in subqual data sets. For example, uh, data which represents separate observations should be handled as a separate records in general class observation domains. Uh, there are other limitations in use of subqual data sets. For example, According to STDM implementation guide, uh, subquals uh, cannot represent subject level data, which should be provided in subject characteristics on the main instead. Another example is findings, which represent interpretations or require additional qualifiers like units or normal ranges. Such information should be stored as a separate records in our uh, findings domains. Timing information or information about non-occurrence events cannot be stored in subqual variable as well. Finally, comments should be placed in the dedicated comments domain. Uh, design of subqual datasets allows uh, merging non-standard variables to their parent domains. During transpose procedure, QName and QLabel values serve as names and labels of new variables, similar to tests, CD, and test variables. They are limited to 8 and 40 characters separately. There is a SAS micro infuse standard scripts repository that can help you with this task. While merging subqual dead variables back to their parent domains looks easy, sometimes 
so there are technical problems for example in case of structural inconsistency when there is more than one q name a record per a reference unique subject and sequence number some sponsors keep non-standard variables within stdm domains so-called uh, stdm plus structure for ease of internal management and convert uh, them into sub data datasets at the time of regulatory submission uh, recently the risk team has proposed and is still considering a new approach for implementation of non-standard variables instead of creating sub data datasets the non-standard variables may be kept in their parent domains like stdm plus structure it will simplify implementation and data review process however such approach may also encourage excessive use of non-standard variables with potential deviations from stdm compliance stdm implementation guide includes appendix c supplemental qualifiers names codes with four standard sub variables some sub variables from this list like uh, treatment emergent flag and other medical important serious adverse events are required by regulatory agencies in preclinical data uh, result modifiers in sub provides details about abnormal findings in mi and ms domains this non-standard variable is utilized in almost every non-clinical study a major source of non-standard risk variables is therapeutic area user guides so-called TACs. these guides acknowledge lack of standard stdm variables needed for specific therapeutic area often the risk TAG is published as a provisional standard it means that TAG introduces a new variables or special purpose domains which are not yet covered by series stdm model when these new variables and special purpose domains become part of a stdm model then uh, the provisional TAG standard will become an official standard therefore today if you want to be series compliant and use non-standard variables from provisional versions of series user guides you should add them as sub variables Cerisk has a project uh, which tracks new non-standard variables introduced in uh, therapeutic area standards. There is a special STDM NSV non-standard variable registry page on Cerisk Wiki, which we will, we will discuss later in this presentation. There is non-official best practice on creation of new study-specific sub variables. Uh, sub variable names or Q name values should start with domain name prefix, like names of standard variables in domains. For example, A, T, R, T, E, M for treatment emergent flag and adverse events. Exceptions are sponsored specific variables which are utilized across domains like visit or unique subject ID in the Stadium model. Q name values cannot use the variable names which already exist in a stereo model. Utilization of sub variables should be consistent within a study and within a submission. It means that the same type of information should be represented by the same Q name and Q label. Also, users should try to use existing non standard variables from series documentation. Implementation of non-standard variables is driven by company and study-specific needs. So far, there are no industry-wide metrics which help to understand implementation of sub variables. Such metrics can be helpful for development series stadium standard. So we decided to run our pilot project to test methodology and potential use of findings for improving standards management processes included data validation let's talk about our pilot study for our research we utilized uh, metrics collected by pinnacle 21 enterprise 
We plan to analyze clinical studies which are finalized or almost ready for regulatory submissions based on uh, presence of, of defining XML file, TS domain, and absence of data quality issues common for ongoing studies. To ensure diversity of collected data, sample studies were selected from different sponsors, phases, and therapeutic areas. So one sponsor may be represented uh, by up to three studies within each phase and each therapeutic area. For example, it could be up to three phase two studies with different indications like oncology, antiviral, and dermatology. Collected data include a list of subqual variables, de-identified sponsor and study ID, study phase, study start date, version of SDDM, study indication, collapse into oncology and non-oncology categories, and Pinnacle 21 enterprise validation score. We plan to analyze the most common subqual variables, diversity in implementation of the same collected information, the industry utilization of CRISC standards and compliance with uh, regulatory requirements. Analyzed subqual data represent implementation of 325 studies from 124 sponsors. Most sponsors are represented by a single study with a maximum three studies and mean of 2.5 studies. There are 91 or 28% oncology and 234 non-oncology studies. Most studies were started in 2015 or later. 76% of studies were implemented based on STDM IG 3.2. 19 studies are based on IG 3.13. There are few studies utilizing other versions of STDM implementation guide. Analyzed studies have from 14 to 75 data sets with a mean of 40. 1.5. There is one study with no subqual uh, data sets. Maximum number of subqual data sets in studies is 30, while uh, mean is uh, 13.7. As expected, there is some differences between oncology and non-oncology studies. Oncology studies have more total number of data sets, uh, mean 50 versus 38 and more subqual data sets with mean 17.5 versus 12.2. We calculated a ratio of subqual data sets per other domains in the study as number of subqual data sets divided by number of qualified domains, where qualified domains are all general class domains and DM domain, plus any other domains which are not qualified uh, to use subquals uh, according to SDM uh, model, but still supplied by subquals data sets incorrectly implemented by sponsor. On average, 38% of qualified domains uh, have subquals data sets across analyzed studies. This subqual ratio is higher for oncology compared to non oncology studies as 72 versus. 66, 67, sorry. Uh, collected data from 325 studies includes uh, more than 27,000 records of unique uh, sponsor, study, data set, QNAME uh, values, which represent implementation of non standard STDM variables in subqual datasets. Number of non-standard variables in studies varies from 1 to 618, with mean uh, 84 and median of 65.5. For each study, we calculated average number of QNAME values per subqual data set. And this uh, number varies within the study from 1 to 26.4. Uh, with mean of 5.8 and 
there is also a difference in this property for oncology studies and non-oncology studies. This table shows the most common subqual datasets. Supplemental adverse event is a leader with its utilization of 96% of all analyzed studies and 100% of all oncology studies. My interpretation is that such high use of sub E dataset indicates a lack of standard STDM variables for handling adverse event data. Almost every study requires additional non standard variables for E domain. Another example is uh, sub TU, tumor identification uh, dataset, with utilization in 76% of oncology studies compared to 52% and 49% of related uh, tumor result and response datasets. Possible interpretation of this difference uh, could be due to lack of standard variables needed for or to represent tumor identification information. The next table represents the 30 most common values for QName variables across all subqual datasets and studies. Here you can see a number of studies where these QName values are present and percentage of studies where Q name value is utilized. This is the second part of the table. So let's explore and discuss these findings. The most commonly used subqual variable is adverse event treatment emergent flag information in sub AE dataset, which is requested by both FDA and PMD agencies. There are special data validation rules to ensure that this information is populated for all records in adverse event domain. Therefore, it is a surprise that only 63% of studies are compliant with this regulatory requirement. Some users believe that treatment emergent flag should be populated in analysis rather than tabulation data since it's a derived value. However, tabulation data may include other derived variables like study days or baseline flag. Sometimes, due to misinformation like a known or partial start date of adverse event, imputation algorithms may be required to compute treatment emergent flag. STDM model does not allow imputation. Therefore, it may be another reason why some users populate a treatment emergent flag information only in analysis data. However, such approach may reduce the quality of tabulation data for a regulatory review. The major benefit of standardized data is to enable automation. STDM structure and series control terminology are very predictable and allow use of automated review and analysis tools. On the other uh, side, Adam structure is flexible to develop data sets uh, which are ready for analysis, so-called one proc away. Uh, however, this analysis process is manual. Most automated review tools use only STDM data and rely on presence of a treatment emergent information in sub AE dataset. If this information is not available, then analysis results may be less predictable and confusing. For example, uh, all records in your adverse event domain may be considered as treatment emergent events. Reviewers may try to derive this information by themselves using different criteria compared to one utilized by the sponsor. Sometimes analysis adverse events dataset is not ideal source of uh, a treatment emergent flag due to unpredictable structure. Uh, therefore, 
standard SDRM subqual variable which represents a trend emergent flag is a good communication tool for sponsors to ensure that data review process is aligned with study protocol. The second, the most common subqual variable is clinically significant flag in EG domain. This non-standard variable is present in 46% of all studies or 66% of studies with sub-EG dataset. Some studies have a sub-EG dataset with the only non-standard variable being EG CLSIG. This information is also widely utilized in other findings domains with physical examination as a runner up to EG domain. However, this information in my previous tables is not very accurate. A problem is a lack of serious conformance during the industry implementation of non standard variables. While expected variable name or Q name value to store clinical significant information in EG domain is EGCLSIG, there are many variations in implementation which increase actual use of clinical significant flag in SAPG dataset to 73% studies with SAPG dataset. This EGCLSIG is a standard CDS subqual variable from STDM IG Appendix C2. From pr the previous slide, it looks like the industry still successfully utilizes the correct uh, variable name in 91% of cases. However, there are many variations in labels or Q label value for this variable. In 100, 48 studies where there are 31 different labels assigned to EG SCL SAG variable. Some of these Q label values raise questions about valid utilization of uh, EG CL SAG variable. For example, clinical significant uh, specify. They look like a description for clinical significance rather than an expected flag. In some studies which do not have subqual variable dedicated to clinical significant flag, this information is still collected by a presented in less standardized way. A common example is interpretation variable in sub EG dataset populated with three terms on normal abnormal not clinical significant and abnormal clinically significant. So in these cases user mixed uh, two potentially different type of information normal abnormal result interpretation and clinical significance flag in a single non-standard variable. The industry needs a guidance and education on the correct implementation. Serious CDM team is planning to add uh, CLSAG clinically significant a variable to a CDM model. It should help with consistent implementation across the industry. Uh, let's talk about Hudra coding. Early versions of CDISC uh, standards assume usage of any coding dictionary. For example, adverse events uh, may be coded utilizing Madra, SNOMAD, or COSTAR. Therefore, uh, AE domain in STDM IG312 had only two generic coding variables, AE decode and AE body system. Later, CDISC acknowledged uh, an exclusive use of MADRA dictionary for FDA and PMDA submissions and explained and expanded uh, a stadium model with 
variables specific to matter coding to support a regulatory review process. Unfortunately, it is not the case for Who Drug Dictionary, which is a primary coding dictionary for concomitant medication and uh, has been recently added uh, to FDA data standards catalog similar to Medra. So far, STDM model supports only who drug generic drug name in uh, CM decode variable. STDM IG suggests utilization of a sub CM dataset for additional coding information. However, no details or examples of implementation are provided. Lack of data standardization and guidance for who drug coding results in huge diversity of implementations by the industry. For example, 298 studies with sub-CM datasets have 1,023 different values for combination of QName, QLabel, or 667 unique QName values for records which represent who drug anatomical therapeutic chemical or ATC classification coding. There are 128 variables of Q name values which include text ATC1. I mean 128 variations for ATC1. Okay, here is some examples. Sponsor implementation of labels for the same non-standard variable are also inconsistent. This table shows an example of different values of Q label for Q name equal IC. M ATC1 in sub uh, CM dataset. Again, it's not only about standard labels, it's also about a different utilization of the same variable name. As you can see here, uh, CM ATC1 variable name is used for both ATC1 code and decode, which are not uh, the same things. The industry really needs help with standardization of Hoodra coding. In study data. Now let's talk about major implementation issues in subqual datasets. Comments. Uh, use of subqual datasets instead of dedicated CO domain for collected comments is still a widespread violation of CRISC standard. However, there is a difference in this violation across domains. This table shows the presence of comments variables in most common uh, standard safety domains. A leader is a sub LB dataset with comments records populated in 51 studies, which represent 16% of all studies or 20% of studies with sub LB dataset. The second one is a sub PC dataset with comments in 16% uh, of studies with this dataset. Note that no comments records were populated in sub DM or vital science dataset, and uh, it's rarely populated in sub AE dataset. Our understanding is that a major driver to store comments in subqual datasets instead of dedicated standard CO domain are either due to convenience to keep all domain related information in subqual datasets or lack of implementation experience. So additional educational efforts may be needed to promote serious conformance. Looking across 325 analyzed studies, 
you know, you can find many possible examples of violation of the risk SDM conformance for implementation of sub world data sets. Here are some examples of common SDM mapping violations in analyzed data. There are more than uh, 1,000 variables which represent timing information in sub world data sets. 966 unique Q name with Q label, which include text date. See examples here of 492 unique Q name with label, which include a text time. Note that some of these non standard time variables are overlapped with date variables, and few of them do not represent timing information like ongoing at time of death. Another example of timing information sub data datasets is visit variables. Violation of series compliance is utilization of sub data datasets for unexpected variables which represent normal range information. However, such cases are quite rare, and you can see some examples here. The next one is original, previous, or supplemental results in conventional or SI units commonly present in sub LB dataset. The next example of invalid sub call implementation is subject characteristics or other non applicable information in sub call datasets, like uh, baseline weight, those units, or if subject did meet eligibility criteria. Uh, there are 61 or 19 percent of studies with sub call uh, datasets for subject visit domain and uh, 11 studies with sub uh, lamental data set for comments. In most cases, it seems uh, that incorrectly implemented sub uh, SV data set uh, stores all information collected on subject visit CRF. Here's examples of other uh, data management related problems. So there are many studies where sub data datasets store data management or tracking information which is not applicable for regulatory submissions. For example, one of analyzed studies includes 618 non-standard variables in sub data datasets. It looks like these variables represent raw data collected in EDC system. Only 44% of non-standard variables in sub data datasets follow a good implementation practice to create SDM variable names with prefix corresponding to the main value. Okay, finally, let's talk about utilization of CDISC uh, therapeutic area guidance. As we mentioned before, CRISC has a special project which uh, keep tracks new non-standard variables introduced in TOX. There is a special STDM non-standard variables registry page on CRISC Wiki. At the time of our research, it includes a list of 173 variables used as new non-standard variables across 40 plus uh, existing cities talks. 142 of these variable names are unique. In analyze the uh, 324 studies, we found sub wall variables which match 24 or 17% out of 142 unique cities non standard variables. Such a lower ratio indicates a potential lower utilization of existing CRISC therapeutic area standards by the industry. 
Note uh, that these our numbers may be not accurate and overestimate utilization of the risk tasks. The reason is that in many cases, the industry implementation of non-standard variables in sub-qual data sets is not consistent with the risk. The most notorious example, uh, most notorious variable is a spec with a CDS interpretation as a specimen type. This uh, spec non-standard variable was implemented in 24 sub -qual studies 11 of them have different interpretation of spec variable as other specify other symptoms, a of special interest, disposition specifications, a specify, so on. More active promotion of the risk therapeutic area guides is expected. Now it's a time to do some conclusions. Uh, this study was run as a pilot to understand the potential use of industry metrics for improving standards management practices and to test methodology. Our major challenge was analysis of collected metrics, which is partially manual. Due to lack of standardization of sub variables, we are we were limited in ability to automate the analysis. Expecting this issue, uh, we limited the number of studies and sponsors to about 300 and 100. Such approach still produced 27,000 records of non-standard variables. Now, for example, Udrakurin was represented by more than 1,000 different sub -qual variables. Uh, reviewing each of 27,000 records and grouping them into a specific type of information cannot be fully automated at this stage. For example, uh, our decision were mostly relied on variable labels or Q label value. In most times, labels have enough descriptive details to make decision about type of information stored in the variables. However, in some cases, implementation of Variable labels is not sufficient to understand content of non-standard variables. Like in some cases, uh, Q label was populated just as a copy of Q name value. That's why some of our numbers in this presentation could be below actual values. Uh, yeah. For example, some Hudra coding variables may be missed in our analysis due to confusing or misleading uh, labels or Q label value. Another challenge was that due to lack of standardization, some information may be hidden, like example of clinical significant flag variable we discussed before. Analysis of such cases is not possible in our investigation because collected metrics uh, does not include study result details stored in Q well variable. We found other methodological challenges to address when performing our pilot. For example, some sponsor may uh, implement STDM plus structure and keep non-standard variables attached to the standard domains. Study status like ongoing, completed, re ready for submission, FDA versus PMDA, uh, etc., is important when doing analysis of collected metrics. For example, the same study may have several data packages or data cuts uh, with different implementation of sub -qual domains, sub -qual variables. Uh, this pilot research uh, created suggestions for additional analysis of the interest implementation of non-standard variables. For example, how consistent is uh, the implementation of sub -quals within each company? During our during conduct of this pilot, we saw both cases. Some companies are very consistent in implementation of sub -qual variables, while others may have the same Q name value but different meaning within a submission or even within a study. 
some collected metrics are not included in this study results. For example, majority of recent studies are implemented with the only two versions of SDM IG. Therefore, it's not enough data to reveal potential correlations of sub-qual implementations with the version of SDM IG. A major goal of our study was to see how we can improve current standards management practices. Uh, we believe that existing standards and regulatory guidance documents are underutilized or ignored. For example, more than one third of analyzed studies do not have a treatment emergent flag information in tabulation data requested by both FDA and PMDA. Implementation of clinical significant a non-standard subqual variable still varies despite a clear guidance in SDM implementation guide appendix C2. Additional educational efforts in promotion of data standards and regulatory requirements are expected. Uh, some information is utilized in almost every study but is not represented by standard SDM variables yet. Clinical significance and Hudra coding are the most common examples. There is still a common practice of misuse and incorrect mapping of collected data into subqual data sets. While some companies manage subqual metadata to ensure consistent implementation within organization, it's still an issue for other. So education efforts are expected to promote a good SDM mapping practice. New validation rules may also help. As a conclusion, uh, we believe that collection and analysis of the industry implementation metrics can help identify global implementation issues and help with their eventual resolution. Thank you for your attention. Uh, now it's time for your questions. Uh, yes, we run out of schedule, but we will still cover a few of your questions in extra time. Okay, let's see. Okay, of course, we still have many questions about sharing our webinar slides. Yes, we will publish our slides soon on Pinnacle 21 website blog page, which will also include recording of our webinar and answers to all your questions I cannot cover today. Okay, here's a question. Your presentation was about SDM. What about subquals in SEND data? Do you have any plans to do research for non-clinical studies? Uh, frankly speaking, I'm not sure if such research is actually needed. From my personal experience, structure of data in preclinical studies is quite standardized and is not much diverse compared to clinical studies. In one of my first slides, I mentioned that subquals in SAND studies are usually limited to result modifier variable in MI and MS domain. If you have any specific ideas or needs, uh, please contact me. To discuss. Here is my email address on this slide. Uh, what are your plans for analyzing the industry uh, implementation metrics? So the question is about our, our next projects. Thank you for this question. Uh, now we're planning to investigate industry implementation of non-standard domains. It may help to understand if there are any common needs and uh, what may be missing in a SDM implementation guide. Another project would be to analyze a usage of non-standard SDM control terminology, extensible control terminology. Uh, it helps to get answer for such questions like 
what city code lists uh, do need urgent enhancement and uh, how compliant the industry extension of existing terminology code list. For example, it can help us to improve validation. If we know the common cases of incorrect extension of existing STDM terminology like synonyms, splitting or merging of standard terms, then we can confidently report such cases as errors instead of warnings which require a manual review. I mean like warnings man require manual review. Where I can find a full list of non-standard variables from CDISC. It's on CDISC wiki page. We will provide you a direct link to uh, this webinar blog post. Note uh, that you need to have a CDISC user account to have access to CDISC wiki page. Does Pinnacle 21 validate consistency of subqual variables across studies? Yes, uh, we have recently introduced uh, this functionality. Uh, FDA data fit, which is customized version of Pinnacle 21 Enterprise, generates application or project level reports for FDA reviewers. A new version of this uh, core DF or core data fitness reports look for consistency of subquals across data sets and studies within the same uh, submission. The next one is a good and long question. Why Pinnacle validation complains about inconsistent Q label for DV term one, DV term two? For Q label, we use the same value as label for DV term variable in DV domain. DV term one and DV term two variables in sub DV represent a value of DV term which does not fit 200 character limitation of SAS format. Okay, yes, uh, in theory, you may be right. Extra uh, DB term variables in subquel data set represent the same type of information as a DB term variable. So labels may be the same. However, there is a common practical complication. Ideally, uh, when merging a DB term one and DB term two non-standard variables back to DB domain, uh, we probably should merge their data into the single long uh, DB term variable and restore originally collected value. However, now the common approach is to merge subquel data back to parent domain by creating a new separate variables like DB term one, DB term two, in addition to DB term. Many FDA review tools display variable labels in favor, in favor of variable names. So in this case, reviewers will see several columns with the same name description and uh, will be confused which is what. That's why uh, informative and correct variable labels are very important for end users like FDA reviewers. A unique labels like protocol deviation term one and protocol deviation term two are expected in this case. Uh, what level of details should be provided for SQL datasets in define XML file? A very good question. In general, you need to treat subquel variables as regular variables in domains. You need to describe value level items for QVal variable as a new non-standard Q name variable. There are two major common problems. Problem number one, user metadata for value level items uh, is as a copy of Q well 
variable in uh, subqual data set. This is wrong. Treat value level items as a variable merged back to parent domain in the CDM plus structure. The second important implementation issue is that you need to create a code list with decoded terms for Q name variable in subqual data set. Defining XML style sheet from a Fuse and Serisk teams utilizes a decoded value from code list of Q name variable to populate a meaningful description for your value level item or new variable in subqual data set in Define XML. So please always create a code list with the decoded terms for Q name variable. Uh, and that will be the last question. For AD var variable, can I use any other reference than sequence number variable for merging subqualls back? It's a little tricky question. Yes, formally and technically you can use other than sequence a number variable for providing a link back to parent domain. However, based on our experience with submission data at FDA, in such cases, almost every time there are major problems. It could be either a wrong technical implementation with uh, data consistency issues, uh, which do not allow to merge data back or just bad SDRM mapping. For example, if there is some visit wide related information, you do not need to attach it to each record in lab test results for the same visit and use ADVAR equal visit. So please revise uh, one more time your SDRM mapping if you use other than sequence value in ADVAR variable. With this, answer i hope that i provide some useful information for you if you have any follow-up questions you can reach us on forum or send email we will put our webinar slides recording and answer answers to your questions on our blog page as we always did before thank you guys for joining us again Please watch out for additional announcement about new educational webinars later this year. Thank you once again for your support, and we are looking forward to present something again in the nearest future.